this is my deck profile from Plymouth LLDS. I travelled down this weekend for a little road trip with my girlfriend, went down to go and see some friends, and I decided that I would play a Highlander deck. So it's still a version of Burning Abyss, been playing a lot of that recently, but also play a lot of cube draft, and anyone that's played my cube will know that it's all completely Highlander in there, so it's 432 different cards, and after loads of drafts and some really strong decks coming out from playing draft format, I was wondering how does a Highlander deck stack up against the current meta? Uh, not very well, but you can kind of just scrape through, it seems. So I'll show you the deck profile and just talk about some of the choices that I made when I was putting it together, I guess. Um, so Burning Abyss deck, I played Baba, Seer, Kalkab, Libic, Alec, Farfa, Graf, and Skarm. Uh, possibly would have wanted to play uh, more Burning Abyss cards. Eight wasn't a lot, but these are definitely the best ones. Uh, I'm not sure. I think there are three more. There's Rubik, Drahig, and one other, but none of them seem very good. Possibly want to play one more just to have an extra name. But obviously, if you're not playing Highlander, just play more of the good ones. Um, and then Phoenix Running Warrior and tour guide. Then to help with rank threes, I played Marauding Captain and a Junk Forward. I don't actually own one of these, so I borrowed it off uh, Peng. Uh, thank you very much for lending me that one for the weekend. Uh, and then also more rank three enablers, Crane Crane. If you have a Burning Abyss monster and Crane Crane, you can even turn one special summon the Burning Abyss from hand normal the crane crane, it dies immediately and then you can target it with the crane crane effect to bring it back so you still have another two card Dante that you can start on because most of this deck is just trying to scramble your way into a Dante as quickly as possible because you won't really win without one. Uh, Mathematician also gives the option to send Libic from deck and special summon a BA that way to get your rank 3 and more rank 3 engines, Lone Fire, Orphis Scorpio, and Darlingtonia Cobra. Uh, drew this one a lot, but occasionally got the combo with the Lone Fire or the Scorpio. And any rank 3 is a good way to start off. Terratop and Taketenborg. Again, just more rank 3s. Played the Snow. Super important card, probably the most important card in the deck. If you can get this to Grave, you can usually find a way to win from there, and if you can't, you're just struggling the whole game. Uh, two bombs, Hydralander and BLS. This is the strongest card to summon like in any Highlander deck. It'll always be live with any five monsters in Grave, and quick effect, non-targeting destruction of any card once per turn. It's super strong, so if you want to play any deck Highlander, Obviously, it's not the best idea competitively, but if you fancy trying it, this is the best card in your deck. Uh, I guess maybe Pendulum might not want to play it if they aren't going to be able to get enough monsters to the grave, but anything else, Hydralander is the best. Um, Hand Traps is a huge spread, because obviously with only one of each and with a lot of decks that you need Hand Traps against in the format, you end up going into... Uh, kind of bottom of the barrel stuff, so one Cerevis, Ash, Ogre, main deck Bell, and then bringing out some of the old boys, got the Didi Crow, Droll, Vela, and Impermanence to make it eight in total. Not really enough, but fortunately there wasn't a lot of Goki at the event, so kind of scraped by in that regard. Um, spells? You can't play Sacker's Light in... Um, Highlander, because you'd only get to play one copy, so you're better off going with a bit of a, a wider selection of spells and traps. Uh, from the spells, I was playing Foolish Burial, Reborn, Soul Charge, Reinforcement, Instant Fusion for the plants, 
called by the grave and emergency teleport. Only target for the teleport was Ghost Ogre, so it can be dead, but just having another special summon level 3 really helps with getting to that first Dante and getting the engine going. Um, and then on top of the impermanence, I played three more trap cards. Fiend Griefing. I was actually very surprised how good this one is. Um, because quite a few decks at the moment actually interact with the graveyard, being able to shuffle things back into the deck, like a trick star that's been uh, targeted with a reincarnation or something for Gouki player, and then being able to either dump a Farfa to interrupt their play or dump a Skarm so that effectively the trap replaces itself was really good. And then finally, a Strike and a Scolding. Counter Trap's just great. Like You're so limited on the power level of what you can play when you have to play 40 one-offs that having two cards that can shut down a play, like there's a limit on how high the ceiling of your own plays can be, so you sometimes need to resort to bringing your opponent down to your level a little bit. And nobody really seems to play around them when you aren't playing a deck which people expect to see real trap cards from. So they caught some people off guard and won some games. Uh, go on to the extra deck. I had Borrow Load, Borrow Sword, Triple Burst, Decode. Uh, Nightmare Package, I've got Unicorn, Phoenix, Cerberus, and a Mermaid. Uh, quite often, if I'm making the uh, the typical underclock, beer, underclock Beatrice combo, I'll go for Cerberus or Phoenix, depending on the matchup, and swap it out for a Mermaid. So I get an extra card in play for the Snow. Uh, it just depends how, where you start from. Sometimes it's worthwhile, sometimes it's not. Um, also had a sold. Summon this quite a lot actually, uh, because I've got a couple of extra warriors in the deck on Marauding Captain and Junk Forward. You can get to it. Searches out my one of BLS, which is always nice, and Underclock Taker. Uh, rank threes, just two. Darius and Dante. Um, obviously, only being able to play one Dante is a real issue because as soon as it gets interrupted, the whole Dante Seer engine gets completely shut out, so the deck is incredibly fragile. Uh, Beatrice, Pilgrim, and Dragoness for the instant fusion. The only real issue with the extra deck was the one of Dante. Uh, I played uh, another version of BA quite recently where Dante was the only two of in my extra deck anyway, so aside from that, everything else is completely fine. Uh, not much of an issue playing a Highlander extra deck. And in the side, I played three Kaijus. Um, brought them in against all sorts of stuff. Like, don't really need any explanation for a Kaiju. Uh, Ghost Reaper to have one more hand trap that I could bring in against Goki, because I'm playing the Assault anyway. Uh, and then onto some spells. A lot of what I was playing in my side deck was to try and get a little bit back into the Altergeist matchup. I've been struggling a lot against them, uh, playing even regular Burning Abyss decks, so I wanted to have a good selection of uh, spell and trap removal. So I had the one off Cyclone, one Typhoon, or one MST, one Twin Twisters, one actual Typhoon, and a Heavy Storm Duster. Um, and then evenly matched, again, more stuff for the Altergeist matchup, Mind Crush. Breakthrough skill I actually found to be really quite effective. Uh, I played some rogue stuff though, so that may have been making it better than it would actually be in the current meta, but it was a, a reasonable choice for the, the meta at the event. Uh, Chaos Trap Hole, I saw that quite a few people were playing uh, Invoked variants, so I put that one in. And then Imperial Order and Skill Drain. Uh, again, as I was saying about other people playing decks that can inherently do a little bit more than you, you need to have floodgates as an option. Uh, these are like the two most powerful floodgates in my opinion right now. It can bring them in if you're going first and you've got a chance to just 
build a little castle on a Beatrice or a Hydroland or something and just have bigger stats than your opponent and sometimes that can win a game. Uh, I'm not sure that I really sat on any of them uh, at this particular event, but that was the theory behind it. Uh, now, I ended up finishing with X1 at the event. Uh, got third place and managed to pick up a qualification from that. Uh, it's passed down because the second place player uh, already picked a picked up a qualification, so super happy that I could <laughs> play my Highlander deck and actually have it work and get qualification for stage two because I, ha I hadn't qualified already. Um, but yeah, really cool to see if anyone else can take a Highlander deck to an event. Obviously, it's a, a serious handicap playing the event with a Highlander build, but I'd love to see what anyone else can do. I don't think that Burning Abyss is necessarily the best choice. There are other decks that work much better in a Highlander format. I just really like this one. Anyway, uh, be great to hear what everyone else thinks and what decks they are planning to play if you want to take this to an event. Uh, but yeah, just shout out to all my friends for coming down, paying for lending cards, and for my girlfriend for traveling with me for the event. Had a fun weekend. Cheers, guys.